Hello everyone, welcome back to another great tutorial. In this tutorial we are going to model UV unwrap, texture, design and finally render out this scan in Cinema 4D. Let me show you the results. We know picture viewer. This is the first one and this is the second one. I am really happy with the results. I know that looks kind of easy. But I'm sure we are going to find something new or interesting in the tutorial. By the way, you can find this scene on my Patreon along with other tutorials. So, without further ado, now let's get into the tutorial. You know what to do as a first step. I'm going to go to the front view, hit Shift and V back, and I'm going to import in the first image plane, which is the front one. I'm going to bump this to 90%. Then we are good to go. First, we are gonna add in a cylinder. I'm gonna scale this up like so. Yeah, something like that will be enough. Then I'm gonna hit NNV to see the wireframes. I want this object to be as uniform as possible, so I'm gonna bump my height segments to up to like let's say 10. So basically, I want every polygon to be as square as possible. Then I can go to the front view one more time and make the cylinder editable. Then I will go into points mode, grab rectangle selection tool and select these points. Then I'm going to scale them in like that. After that, let's check the bottom. I'm going to move this down, then move this up. I will need a loop cut right here. Then after adding this one in, I'm gonna double click on that edge loop. Uh, actually, let's make a fill selection. Selection, fill selection, select these polygons and scale them in. Uh, actually, let's bring this down to 75 because I can't see anything. Yeah, something like that. Then I'm gonna grab these only, scale them in. Bring this down and that should be it. Also, I'm going to select all the polygons. Right click and select normal move tool. And I'm going to move these out because I will be working in subdivision surface workflow. So when I apply the subdivision surface generator, the polygons uh, will be drawn in. So I will need to make it slightly larger than the image plane. Something like that. Okay, I think we got the basic shape. Then let's hold down Alt and add this southern surface in. So you can see what I was talking about. So it's always good to make your objects a little larger before applying southern surface. Uh, I don't think we need the top. For the moment, so just delete them. Okay, the top section looks, looks good. Then the bottom part, we are gonna need some spotting edges like this one, this one, and this one. Perfect. I'm gonna hit NNA, and everything is looking great. You know, let's check the top part. Obviously, we need to scale this up. Then I'm gonna hold down Control, bring this up. Let's turn off South Division Surface for the moment. I'm going to make a loop selection. Loop selection shortcut is UNL. It's right over here. If you don't know the shortcuts, you can always hit U. Uh, this is for the selections. If you hit, hit U, this list will show up and you can uh, see the shortcuts for selections. In this case, we used UNL for loop selection. Then I'm going to right click select Extrude tool and extrude this out. Perfect. Then I'm gonna grab this, scale them in. Then I'm gonna hold down control, bring this down, and that's gonna be it. Let's hit Q. All right, looking good, but not there yet. I'm gonna double click on that edge loop, grab clone tool, uh, sorry, slide tool, hold down control, and clone these out so that I could grab these polygons. Again, I used loop selection tool. Hit E, hold down Control and move these up. After doing that, we can delete these polygons because we are not going to see that part. 
let's see the queue. All right, looks fine. Let me check the image plane. Yeah, it's looking fine. Maybe we can move these up and make a loop selection and scale this up slightly. Okay, I think for the basic shape, we are done over here. Now let's try to model the top section. For that section, I have another image plane as well. Let's go to the top view, hit Shift and V, and I'm gonna bring this one in, the top one. I'm gonna bump this up to 75. Uh, also, we can hide this for the moment. Let's go to the top view, and I'm gonna add in a disk because most of the details we are gonna add are round shapes. So after adding this one in, I'm gonna make it editable so that I can scale this on the z-axis, like so. Then I'm gonna scale up, scale the z on me, and here we go. Then I'm gonna hold down Control, drag this off, then scale this down. Nice. Then I can right click, select. Both of these, right click, connect objects and delete, then go into points mode, grab rectangle selection, select that help and delete them because I will be using a symmetry generator so we don't have to work on the right side. Then I'm going to grab polygon pen tool and we can get rid of this. Then I can move this one over here, hold time control and extrude two times. We have triangles over here. Let's try to Make it a little bit better. I'm gonna add these edges. Same here. I will first get rid of these edges. Oh, sorry. I cannot do that. Uh, why don't we just select them and hit U and Z, which will melt the edges. Then I'm gonna grab back polygon pen tool and add these horizontal edges. Actually, I'm gonna hold down control and get rid of that edge so that I can move this one down over here. Because we are gonna have to add that detail over here, which requires a little bit more geometry than we had. All right, we are looking fine. Uh, let's make sure that these are perfectly straight. I mean, we need to check the X position and size of these points because, as I said, I will be using a cement generator. So I'm gonna hit. I'm going to type in zero on both X size and position and hit enter. So now if I go into model mode and select symmetry, that should work perfect. Then I'm going to make the symmetry editable. Uh, actually, before doing that, I need to click on weld. I'm mean, enable the weld option. Then hit C on the keyboard. Then I'm going to double click on these edges. Hold and shift. Select the boundaries. Then T, hold down control and extrude these out. After doing that, I'm gonna right click and select hit circle tool. I'm gonna move down and actually let's scale this in. Then I'm gonna hold down control. I'm gonna scale this three times. And I can grab these edges and bring this down. Perfect. Then I'm gonna select this back and yeah, we are gonna need an inset. Then bring this down. By the way, let me turn off that work plane. Yes, this is gonna be more than enough. Then what about that detail? Well, it's gonna be really easy. Before doing anything, let me slide this to make enough room. To model that detail. So I'll select this grab inset tool first. Then, since this is a flat object, I can just move them around with move tool. And these ones. OK, 
Yeah, something like that will be more than enough. I think we are done over here. I mean, we just need to add supporting edges and yeah, we need to bring this down by holding control. Then I can scale this in. Then let's put that object under the subdivision surface. Nice. As I said, we are going to need to add some supporting edges like over here and maybe one over here. Then let's see over here. And I'm going to grab that loop selection because otherwise uh, it's not going to be possible to add that supporting edges with the loop cut tool because of these holes. So I'm going to select this, grab slide tool, hold down control and clone these in. Hit Q. Nice. If you find these edges too tight, you can double click on that edge loop and move this, slide this down. It's going to smooth it out. Same here. We can grab these and slide them in. Then let's see. I'm going to double click on these, clone these out. And I can make an inset over here. Perfect. Now let's focus on the other object. I'm going to hide this one as well. I'm going to add in a disk because, again, uh, the shape I want to model is a round object. So it is best to start with a disk or a cylinder. In this case, I will use a cylinder, a disk. Then I want to make this editable. Because if I don't make this editable, I will not be able to scale this on the uh, Z axis only. So I first, I will make it editable. I will go into model mode. Then I'm going to scale the Z only. Then I'm going to hit E, hold on control, bring this down over here. I can merge these, then get rid of that side. Then I can move this over here, this one over here, then get rid of these points. And let me see, I can do something like that for the moment. Same here. Uh, actually, let me bring this up. You may not see what I am doing. Yeah. Then I'm going to extrude this three times. And I can get rid of these edges. Get this one in. Then I'm going to bring this down over here. I think we can flatten this out by scaling these points on the X axis. After scaling, hold on shift and stop at 0%. Perfect. Then I'm going to select these polygons. Actually, before doing anything, I need to zero out these positions and sizes of these points then i will go into model mode with a symmetry generator and make it editable for making it editable turn this on i did this because i will be using a fit circle tool so grab these polygons first make an inset uh, select this one as well make an inset first then Use fit circle tool. I'm gonna hit T, scale this like so, and then we can just flick it. It's that easy. I will do the same on these polygons, select them, make an inset, then grab circle tool. Hold this up, and that's gonna be it. No, I'm gonna grab polygon pen tool because it's Another detail over here. It's going to be really easy. Just move this around. And this is going to be more than enough. Yes. Then I can hold down Alt. Sorry, hold down Control and click on these polygons, which will delete them. Now let's select all the polygons, grab Extrude Tool, but this time turn on Caps option. Nice. Let's put this one into a subdivision surface. Actually, I'm not very happy about that 
point we have a hole over here let me see here we have a one two three four one two three four five six sided pole over here so let's try to get rid of that i can connect this and get rid of Please. I know this is going to create an angle over here, but I think it's it's much better than having that pole. Then I can invert the selection, select these back, and extrude these down. Perfect. Now let's enable cell division surface. All right, we are looking fine. By the way, let me turn off that isolated editing. Perfect. The other thing we need to do is extrude this down, or actually, all I need to do is grab these edges. Alt and Shift, double click on them. Then grab Slide Tool, Alt and Control, and clone this out. After doing that, Move these down like so with Q. Perfect. I'm going to scale them like so. Okay, now I can grab these polygons. I can split these out, right click, split, grab them, then use its circle tool one more time. And let's see. I'm gonna hold on control, move these up. Then I'm gonna hit T, scale them in. After doing that, I can take this down. Actually, let me solo this because I'm gonna scale this. Mm -hmm. Then at that sporting edge, somewhere around here, let's make cell division surface editable. Uh, I'm gonna grow my selection one time, U and Y. Move this up, scale this in. Yeah, something like that. Perfect. I think we can unhide this one. And let's see. Unhide this one as well. I'm going to move this up somewhere around here. Yeah, then these two guys move them up. I think we can group them under a single subdivision surface. Move them down over here, select them, hit Alt and G. We can get rid of this. Check the model from different angles. And I think this is looking great. If you need more definition, you can add more sporting edges. Like so. All right, I think this is going to be enough. Now we can jump into the UV unwrapping process. Let's select the UV edit layout. Before getting into UV unwrapping, let's try to organize the scene. For example, we can combine these objects. I mean, as long as you are not going to animate these objects, you can uh, merge them into a single one. So let's select these three objects, right click and click on connect objects and delete. And I'm going to rename that to top. I will go into polygon mode, select all, control A. As you can see, these are flipped. I mean the normals of these polygons. So grab them, right click and click on reverse normals. Select them back. Before I'm wrapping these, I'm going to reset the UVs. Then Let's try automatic UVs, like the packed one. I'm going to click on apply. And um, it did a Medicore job. So let's try the other ones, like the cubic one. All right, that one looks better. I mean, except these gaps. Let's try the other one. Okay, this one looks the best. So I'm going to keep this one. Also, we are not going to put any textures on that section. So there is no point spending too much time on that section. The important part is going to be 
is polygons because we are gonna because this is where we are gonna put textures on. I'm gonna rename that to can and actually before getting into this one, I think we need to split up that part. So I just double click on it since we deleted the connection. I'm gonna right click, click on split, go back to the first one and delete these polygons. Then I can group these, right click, connect objects and delete. Since we have just added new polygons to that object, we need to unwrap this one more time. Just hit Ctrl A, select all the polygons and click on apply. Perfect. I'm gonna hide this for the moment and let's focus on the can itself. First, I always start off by resetting to UVs and we are gonna need to select seams and in this case, I think we need to select this. I want these polygons to be in a single UV island so that it's gonna be much easier to, you know, put textures on, on these polygons because these are gonna be visible. So select these, then click on UV and wrap. Perfect. We got this part. Let's move this out and let's focus on this one. As you can see, this doesn't look any good. We cannot put a texture on that UV island. So we need another seam. So let's select these edges. Just double click on them. Hold down control, deselect this one, then open up UV and wrap options, click on restrict to polygon selection and click on that. Okay. I'm gonna open up my UV map. So I'm gonna rotate it R. Then move them over here. Now we need to make these UV islands as flat and as straight as possible so that we are not gonna have any hard time while putting a texture on that UV island. To do that, first let's try to relax this. All right, not that bad. Maybe we can double click on the edges in the middle and we can click on UV straighten. Then I'm gonna hold down control, click on points mode, which will convert these edges into points. Then click on add UV pins. Then go to your relax UV and click on use UV pins. All right, much better than the previous one. Clear the UV pins. Then the most important one is the UV rectangle rise. Click on that. And here you go. Perfect. I'm going to go to UV packing and click on apply. Now I'm going to check my object while the subdivision surface is on. As you can see, there is not and distortion. I mean, we have some over here, but we can reduce that by adding a loop cut right over here. Let's select this back, and here we go. All right, this is looking perfect. Now let's fit this one in as well. We are not going to do anything with this one, but make sure that the this is in the UV space. And that's gonna be it for the UV unwrapping part. Now I am in Photoshop, as you can see, and I have this design and I have some variations of that design with different colors. And below that layer, I have this UV texture coming from Cinema 4D. Now I'm gonna go back to Cinema 4D. I'm gonna show you how you can create these UV textures and export them out from Cinema 4D. To create that UV texture, we need to switch to paint. Layout, then I'm gonna click on that and unlock it and lock this over here. So we're gonna have both 3D and 2D view. I'm gonna grab my can and I'm gonna click on that icon, paint setup wizard. Then deselect everything and only enable the can, then say next. Turn off recalculate UV because you know we just did that. Say next. Then just enable color and set your UV texture to 4K or whatever you need. And say finish. That's all. Now we are going to have a blank texture. As you can see, we have just color on it. So to get these UV outlines, I need to go to layer and click on create UV mesh layer. 
obviously you need to select can the object then go to layer and click on uv mesh layer if you zoom in enough you are going to start to see these white outlines and you can check this out by going to the layers and here you go this is the layer we need then it's going to be pretty straightforward just go to file and save texture as so this is how i got that uv texture from cinema 4d and above that layer i have these simple designs most of the time your clients will provide you artworks you don't have to worry about these but if you want to design something you can follow the same approach as you can see these fit in perfectly into that uv island we created for the can object now all you need to do export this file uh, i'm going to hit ctrl alt s and save them as now let's go back to cinema 4d before rendering out this can i'm going to delete that material this came from the body paint setup so uh, we don't need this one because i will assign any octane material so just delete it then select subdivision surface and click on that icon which will enable us to move the axis of that subdivision surface i'm going to bring this down right over here so that it's going to be much easier to navigate this around also it's going to be much easier to scale this down first i need to turn off the axis mode and here we go now i will go to edit and click on copy and we can rename that to can solve the now i am in a different scene where you can find these on my patreon this is basically a studio lighting setup and I will be using this one to make things faster. First, we can turn off these. We are not going to need them. Then I can hide the models. Then we can go back to this one. Edit, copy one more time. Go back to this one and hit Control V. Obviously, this is too large. First, I'm going to click on my object. Then open up coordinates. Make sure that this is set the world. And I'm going to set my Y axis to zero so that the model will be right on the stage. Then I'm going to hit T and scale this down to something like that. If you want something precise, uh, I am talking about the size of this can. You can bring in a cube, set its Y size to, let's say, 15 centimeters. Then you can grab the can. Uh, let me move this up. And you can grab the can and scale this up until it matches the cube and you can delete this cube then let me open up that live river window i'm gonna duck this one right over here and then i'm gonna click on render uh, let me go to the stage duplicate this one and zoom in or maybe we can move this can somewhere around here then i'm gonna go back to my cam and i will I pin 250. I want something very narrow for this camera. And yeah, something like that. Now let's try to create a material. Material, create a gloss material. And I'm going to open this up, open up the node editor and look for image texture and bring this one in. I'm going to first select this one and pipe this one into the diffuse perfect we can close this then i want some roughness like 0.3 and then all i need to do is assign this to do can uh, i'm gonna rotate this around yeah something like that then let's create another material glossy this is going to be a metallic one so let's set this diffuse color to something like that then i will go to the index and i'm going to bump this up to six uh, by the way let's assign this uh, to the top object obviously this is too metallic so let's go to the roughness and set this to like 0.5 perfect then i want more contrast in the image so let's go to the cam octane camera and bring down this gamma to 
I don't know, 0 0.8 maybe or 0.7. And the other thing, I want to turn off one of these lights. Let's try to turn off this or this one. Yeah, I think this is looking much better. We get more contrast in the image by turning off one of them. But of course, it is up to you. Then let's duplicate this a few times. I'm gonna move this one over here, hold down control, move this one over here, and then I'm gonna duplicate this material, hold down control, move this up over here, open this up. We can go to diffuse. We don't need to open up the node editor, click on image texture, and to replace this one, for example, with this one. And I'm gonna assign this to can, or actually, we can put these on the existing one. And here we go. Let's make another one and duplicate this material as well. Go to image, image texture and select this one. And I'm gonna assign this one on that material. Perfect. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit so that we are gonna have a have enough room for another can. Hold on control, drag these out. Then I'm gonna duplicate this one. Hold on control, drag these off. Make sure that this is not this material. Yeah. Then go to diffuse, click on that, and select the last one. I guess we haven't used this one yet. And obviously we need to assign this on that material. Yeah, perfect. That metal part looks too dark, so let me open up that material, or just you can click on that, then you can go to diffuse, and let's uh, make this something like 50% gray. Yeah, absolutely, this is looking much better. And maybe we can bring down this roughness value to 0.4. And we can rotate them. I'm gonna click on pre per object transform yeah this is looking great okay now let's try to make this a little bit more interesting i'm gonna hide the other ones just for the moment and grab this one i'm gonna hold down alt and click on the cloner objects then I'm gonna play around with these sizes, something like that. Uh, I think two will be more than enough. Then I'm gonna need more for the y axis, something like that. Then for the z axis, I can do something like that. Let's get them closer, closer just a little bit more. Yeah, something like that. Can increase up this number, and that's gonna be enough. Then I'm gonna unhide these ones and select them and put them under this cloner. You can select the cloner and change this mod to random. Perfect. Now I'm gonna grab my camera and go coordinates. And let's do something like that. Let's try to zoom in. And let's click on render. All right, this is looking perfect, really cool. But as a last touch, I'm going to click on my Octane camera tag, go to thin lens, and set this aperture to one. Uh, let's try two. Then I'm going to click enable focus and click on that can, for example. If uh, this aperture amount is not enough, we can bump this up to, let's say, 10. Yeah, this is looking really cool. We can duplicate this camera and I don't know, we can try another angle. We can zero this out or do something like that. Or we can click on that can to focus on it. And let me try. Oh, sorry, I need to rotate my camera. Yeah, this is looking really cool. 
up to this point we can play around with the settings of these materials you can grab them all and go to index for example let's we can set this to 1.8 i don't know maybe 1.6 and you can play around with the roughness amount if you want to make it shinier something like that but i like that look a lot so i'm gonna stick to these values and give it a few seconds to render this out let's click on show and picture viewer and yeah okay great then i'm gonna go back to this one we can turn off the cloner right click show in picture viewer yeah nice by the way my resolution is hd let's make this full hd all right, so let's right click, click on the show in picture viewer, and here we go. It's looking perfect. Then I want to render this out with the same resolution, just enable the cloner. And let's wait for 30 seconds. Show in picture viewer. Yeah, this is looking really cool. Another tip if you want. One of these can't to be more visible. You can't duplicate this. For example, uh, let me turn the cloner off. So let's say that you want this black can to be more visible. You can duplicate this a few times. By doing so, you're gonna have more of it. Okay, I think that's gonna be enough for this tutorial i hope you find it useful and uh, you enjoyed the process if you want to get that uh, lighting setup you can find this on my patreon or you can create it by yourself it is really easy just a standard uh, studio lighting setup if you have any questions just let me know anytime also make sure to follow me on my socials i have just started to be more active on social media i would really appreciate it if you follow me and I would also appreciate it a lot if you like the video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, you can also consider subscribing. Anyway, thank you very much again. And I will see you in the next tutorials. Bye.